You already know that at meiosis, when gametes are formed, the two chromosomes of a given type separate. Each goes into a different gamete. You can also tell from this diagram that different pairs of chromosomes seem quite separate, quite independent. It wouldn't surprise you to learn that the way the first pair of chromosomes separates at meiosis does not affect the way the second pair of chromosomes separates. Our pea plant is heterozygous for both height and flower color. If, at the first division, the top daughter cell in the diagram gets the chromosome carrying the dominant allele for height, then it may also get either the chromosome carrying the recessive allele for flower color or the chromosome carrying the dominant allele for flower color. And that is because the chromosomes carrying the gene for height have no influence on the chromosomes carrying the gene for flower color. You can see both situations, capital T with capital W and capital T with small w, in the upper and lower patterns labeled first way and second way. The first way and second way are distinct possibilities at the beginning of every meiosis, and they are equally probable. Now notice that the first way gives two gamete genotypes, the second way gives two other gamete genotypes. After a large number of meiotic cell divisions, some going the first way and some going the second way, you would find all four gamete genotypes, all equally frequent. Seems very reasonable, doesn't it, to see the unlinked genes as being carried by different types of chromosomes. Okay, our chromosome model explains the inheritance of unlinked genes pretty well. How about linked genes? You probably guessed the answer already. Linked genes are on the same pair of chromosomes. Consider our pea plant example for the linked genes, seed shape and possession of tendrils. Two alleles one for each of these genes are on one chromosome. 